Hey everybody, welcome back, and if this is your first time, welcome. My name is Max Haddad, and today I'm going to be talking about 10 prison myths that I thought were true before I was incarcerated. I don't know if it's Hollywood's fault or what. So if you enjoy, consider liking the video and subscribing if you're into this sort of thing. I'm going to save the biggest one, at least for me, for last, because uh, I think I might make another video about it. Anyways, enjoy the video. Prison myth number one. I know that we have all heard this one. It's a little risque, so I'm going to be careful with it. When you're taking a shower in prison, don't drop the soap or someone's going to get overly friendly with you without consent. I'm not going to use the word. So I just assumed this was how it is when you went in. You take a shower. I don't, you know, like get a special glove so you don't drop the soap whatever first of all most soap in prison comes in a bottle it's liquid soap uh, bars of soap are are gross first of all you don't have anywhere to keep them really you know how a bar of soap when it's been sitting in water gets like real ushy gushy and, and uh, mushy that's basically your option so if you buy a bar of soap you're gonna just be rubbing your body with paste until that's gone. So people will buy bars of soap typically to clean their clothing with if they don't wanna send them out uh, to laundry. But here's the deal, if you drop the soap, it's going to slide into the drain. The, the shower floors and gator pits, you know, shower rooms with multiple heads of showers just for a bunch of dudes to hang out or whatever. The floors go like this, you know, it's a slope towards a drain. Uh, so what's in that drain literally everything that comes out of a man's body i'm not going to list them i'm going to let you use your you know imagination everything and it doesn't drain well because there's so much hair in it so your bar of soap is just sitting like a little disgusting pile of mush in a bird's nest made out of human excrement it is awful so no drop the soap in prison the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to be getting more soap hopefully Number two is beat up the biggest guy as soon as you get to prison and from then on, no one will mess with you. So you get to prison, day number one. If you show up at, let's assume you're at, you know, like a medium security, it's an open dorm thing for some parts of the day. You go to the day room, you see this big dude, he's probably seven one, weighs 300 pounds and you fight him and somehow you know you win congratulations you've had prior training i guess because he's a monster nobody is gonna think wow what a tough guy i wouldn't want to mess with him if anything they're probably going to want to fight you more because you just showed up and fought someone you had no problem with for the most part prisoners even if they're enemies they want to keep their space you know the, the the whatever building that they live in as peaceful as they can. They want their daily life to be as normal as prison allows it to be. Yeah, there's scuffles, there's gang fights, it happens. They know that, I knew that. But nobody wants some dude walking around who's just gonna jump at somebody because he's trying to prove something and that somebody he jumped at didn't deserve it. Uh, and also, while I was down, I saw guys literally that were like four feet tall somebody who i know had to be made fun of their whole life for how short they were it sucks fight guys that were at least my height i'm six two even taller and and win so nobody is gonna say wow he won a fight he could beat everybody up it's always a gamble if you're fighting somebody if you see people fighting you know you're, it's basically a, a roll of the dice nothing is a sure thing you could slip on the floor. You would have won the, the fight before, but now you, you know, you're laying on the ground and the dude gets on top of you. It's just not how it works. It's a really simple way of looking at how people are. And it's not true. Don't, if you're about to be locked up, I'm sorry, but it, don't do this to yourself. Number three, I guess this one's more serious, but prisons exist to rehabilitate criminals. Uh, I know that my lawyer thought that was true. I'm sure the judge thought that was true. I don't think the prosecutor cared, to be honest with you. He just wanted a conviction. But 
I'm pretty certain that our government is not like, yeah, just make a bunch of buildings that are privatized to torture people in. That's not, at least not how they're presenting it to, to the public. Uh, the idea is that, yeah, criminals are going to go to prison and at least realize their mistake, not necessarily be rehabilitated by anything that, you know, the, the prison warden is setting in place. And then they're going to leave prison and, and not commit the same crime again or, or any crime, hopefully. I'm sure that's the idea behind it, right? So this is, I guess, half true, but it's not because when you get there, you realize that even though there are programs in place to, you know, help you, they're typically run by people who, even if they're, you know, in, their intentions are pure and they're good people, they don't have the training necessary to talk to a big group of people and get through to anybody, especially if these guys have been living a certain way for two decades and then they show up and and this social worker is trying to convince them to not do the only things that have ever worked for them even though worked means they end up in prison when i was i was put in a, a drug class uh, the reason i went to prison is i i robbed a pharmacy not with a gun or anything just a note and when i eventually got caught got sentenced i Part of my sentence was I had to go to this, you know, like not rehab, but they were teaching us about drugs and why, you know, drugs are bad. Um, and the person leading the class told us outright, listen, my son had a problem with hard drugs and he started just drinking and smoking pot and it worked for him. Now I'm an addict. I can't do anything. If I do one thing, I'm going to do everything. And, and that's basically how that works. So even though her intentions were pure, it's really bad advice. Let alone that getting into one of these classes is nearly impossible because there's like three a year for 2000 prisoners. There's just no resources. The planning is so poor and prison is such a frustrating place that you, unless you are really, really, really determined, you're not taking any of this seriously. So yeah, this is a myth. I can't totally blame the people in charge of the prisons. A lot of it is on the prisoners shoulders, but I gotta say, I got a soft heart for them because these are people that have been living, like I said, two decades the same way and they show up somewhere that sucks and are supposed to just decide that, yeah, these people that are making my life suck or who I'm going to listen to. <laughs> Prisons are about punishment as they stand right now. Myth number four is that prison food is, hey, it's as good as, uh, you know, kids lunch at school. You're in fifth grade. You get that little rectangular piece of pizza. It's at least that good. Here's the deal. It may look like a kid's lunch that he would get in elementary school, right? First of all, <laughs> that's wrong to feed an adult man, somebody who weighs 280 pounds, the same amount of food that you would give a 100 pound fifth grader. It's just not, it's not, it's not right. Now, imagine that the lunch ladies in this fifth graders school, lunch ladies, lunch guys, whatever, are instead of showing up and being focused on making delicious food for all the kids in the school, they're actually focused on smuggling food out of the kitchen to sell it to people for money or smuggling drugs, handing notes to the other lunch ladies for some reason, <laughs> that they're thinking about everything other than making sure the food is good and that it's clean. So you end up with food for this kid <laughs> that's filled with sweat, literally, blood, literally, everything bleh, gross from these people that are not there to make the food. I'm not mad at them. It's they don't have any opportunities to do this stuff, which really they shouldn't. Uh, but to say just because it looks like kids food, it's it's as good. It doesn't come out of the package that way. People are preparing it and the people that are preparing it the standards that they're supposed to, you know, hold themselves to or whatever, it's not happening. So if, if the food at your kid's school was as good as the, the you know, the free food that we were provided, change schools. It's not good. Myth number five is be respectful to the people that you interact with and you'll be fine. You know, just treat others how you want to be treated. Carry yourself like an adult, have some self-respect. 
you know, be nice to people, but be firm when you need to say no, that kind of thing, and you're going to be fine. That's not true. Uh, prison is full of people that are desperate for money, for, for food. They're hungry. They might be addicted to drugs still, and they're desperate to find a way to, to get that. Uh, and they don't care how nice you were to them. They don't. They don't care how respectful you were. If somebody's desperate, if you back someone into a corner, even if they back themselves into that corner, how kind you've been does not matter. There are plenty of people in prison that are going to take advantage of you if they think they can, whether it's directly or they're going to sneak around and, and steal from you. Or I mentioned gangs earlier. There are groups of people that are happy to take things from unaffiliated people prisoners, prisoners that aren't a part of a gang. So it, you know, doesn't cause contention between two gangs, but groups of people actually, whether they're affiliated with a gang or not, that are going to find weak people, nice people, or even big mean guys that they know in a group they can beat up and they're going to take their stuff. It never happened to me. I was lucky. Uh, I, I had a lot of things going for me, I guess. Uh, but it came close a couple times and luckily some people stepped in before I had to do anything. Now, <laughs> yeah, I think you're probably going to have a better time if you carry yourself, you know, with, with respect and treat people with dignity, that sort of thing. But this is not, you know, a safe haven that doesn't, um, really provide any insurance that people are going to come and not take your stuff. It's definitely... <laughs> not a guarantee that now prison is just a crappy place to live, but don't worry about anyone trying to pull one over on you. That's just not how it works. Now on that same note, myth number six is that prison is constantly violent. It's a war, the Thunderdome, you know, you're in the doghouse and I'm the dog, that kind of thing. It's, it's awful. There's bodies flying, there's blood splattered everywhere. And that's, that's not the case. So yeah, it's, it's not a safe place to be. But like I said earlier, for the most part, even though there's the desperate people running around, there's the groups of people taking advantage of, of weak individuals. For the most part, people want the place that they live in to be as comfortable as possible. So fights do break out often, but it's not like every prisoner is getting into a fight every day. I would say out of a given week that I was in prison, I would probably see two or three fights. And I was at a medium security prison uh, and basically the worst dorm that you could be in because I refused work. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure there are prisons that were worse than mine, I'm certain, uh, but most prisons would be better than mine. So yeah, the idea that, you know, white and black people are constantly fighting because of their race the idea that, uh, you know, you're, it's like you're hiding under a desk because there's a, a you know, a nuclear bomb warning or something. It, it's just not like that. Mostly prison are, you know, it's long periods of boredom and then short periods of intense panic and fear and danger. So part of me would almost prefer that it be violent all the time. Of course I don't, but that threat of violence, that constant stress pressing down on you that when is something going to pop off? Because it's going to happen. It's just, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And that constantly pressing down on you does damage to a person's psyche over time. Even if you're aware of it, even if you're doing what you can to you know counteract it and remain healthy, it hurts. It hurts you emotionally. And uh, you know, in a lot of cases, the things that can happen to you physically, the violence, whatever, can't hold a candle to the stuff that can happen to you emotionally because you carry that with you. If you're not physically disabled, the emotional stuff sticks with you way longer. So no, prison is not crazy dangerous, at least not in the way that you would think. Myth number seven is you make prison hooch, like prison wine, in the toilet. I think, what is it? Is it the, the longest yard? Is that a movie? <laughs> Some movie where, who is it? David Spade? I don't even know. They're making prison wine in the toilet. And that's what you do. You have a nice 
clean ceramic, which that's never going to be the case. Your toilet is metal, I promise you. It probably looks like a trough to feed horses out of, uh, but instead horses feed the trough. Horses, if you're lucky, most of the time it's like earthworms. Did that make sense? So <laughs> you don't get your own toilet most of the time. For short periods, you might when you're transferring, whatever. It's not ceramic. <laughs> but in this movie, they had this, you know, this nice ceramic toilet and it's full of just this mm, beautiful, you know, Moscato or whatever, this, 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 you know, this sweet, crisp, yellow, green Sauvignon Blanc. And that's just not the case. Uh, on every occasion when I saw typically a group of people, not just one guy working on a batch of hooch, uh, which was actually pretty common because it was something that brought in a ton of money if you were able to pull it off. Most of the time it was made in their storage bin, right? Um, most of us had these plastic boxes, unless they got stolen from us, these, these relatively big plastic boxes that you could store your stuff in and you know, you had a lock and whatever. So somebody would have this big black trash bag in their box. They would be the person that would get the most money from you know, the wine if it, if it turned out well, because they were the person that took the biggest risk. They would be the person that was caught with it if the guard smelled it, which was common because in order to make it, one part of the process is that you have to burp it, right? Meaning you have to have some type of tubing, typically, uh, that you can stick in this plastic bag and uncap. You open your box, you uncap it because you have to release those gases or you've literally created a bomb. <laughs> so constantly, whoever's in charge of it that has it in their box you know, they, they, they've got the liquid, they threw in the ketchup and the, the bread for the yeast, and they threw in whatever fruit they could find and some sugar if they were lucky, maybe even some Kool-Aid because they're worried it's going to taste like garbage, which it is. That's not the point. <laughs> they open it and they pop the cap on the tube and they burp it. And now the whole dorm for the next hour smells like the world's worst vodka. Myth number eight is that the guards are in constant fear of the inmates. And yeah, I'm sure that some of the guards are afraid and occasionally they're nervous, but if anything, it was the other way around. The guards had all the power. If a fight broke out and the guards were aware of it, they're coming running with batons and mace and tasers. And it's not just one guard. It's not just two guards. It's 15 guards. It's the captain and he comes riding in on a white stallion and he's going to put an end to this because he's a hero and he can't wait to tell his wife about it. It's a nightmare. They charge in because <laughs> they're bored too. They didn't take the job because gosh dang it, I just want to help people. They took the job because it pays well, there's good benefits and they get to put on a uniform and be the, you know, the badass for a little bit. Myth number nine is that prisons have gyms and you get to work out in this nice gym and you get to go outside regularly. Don't worry. I know you're locked inside all the time, but you'll get some sun. You get to do some laps around the field, toss the old pig skin. It is not like that at all. We had a gym. We did have a gym, but it was closed and it was closed because literally every machine in that gym had broken. And it's not like they all broke at one time. It's that slowly over the course of a couple of years, one piece would break and then you know the bench press some how, how do you break a bench press i don't know but it would break and then the elliptical broke and then this broke and that broke and they never fixed any of it none of it got fixed not one time so not even considering how dangerous that is to have somebody lifting weights on a machine that's broken one of the pulleys is getting ready to snap they didn't care if we got to work out in the gym or not because they saw us struggling to find ways to work out we're going to do push-ups in the bathroom we're going to do pull-ups on the bathroom stall we're going to literally hide under our bunks and do sit-ups because if they see us doing sit-ups, they're going to tell us to stop. Now, as far as going outside, again, there's a field. Technically, we could have gone outside. I can count on one hand the amount of times that the guard said, hey, guys, like we're a group of puppies, you want to go outside? It never happened. Uh, especially when it was fall, it was a little, ooh, a little chilly winter, not going to happen. If, is it sprinkling outside? We're not going outside. Is it, is it maybe going to rain? We're not going outside because there's no chance I'm getting my one collared shirt wet for a bunch of inmates. And it's not like we were supposed to go outside every day anyways. So we'd have one, maybe two days a week that we were, you know, supposed to go outside 
and it was up to one guard. And if he didn't feel like it, he would tell 160 guys in this dorm, sorry, you don't get to see the sun today. All right, myth number 10. I said I was gonna save the best for last, at least in my opinion, I think it's an important distinction to make. People think that prison is not full of nonviolent drug offenders, right? They've checked the stats. They see that no, the majority of, of people in prison are actually, it's a slight majority, but the, the majority are people that have burglarized, they've robbed, they were you know disorderly in public, they were drunk or whatever it was, but disorderly was their charge, that sort of thing, breaking and entering, even violent, right? Some violent crimes. And then there are the non-violent drug offenses. These are just drug addicts that were caught possessing the drug that they're addicted to. Now, statistically, technicality here, yeah, if you look at the piece of paper, black and white, you're right, this myth is true. The majority of people in prison are not nonviolent drug offenders. They're, they're worse criminals. But here's what's not looked at, and here's the thing that makes this a myth, is that just because someone got charged with robbery doesn't mean they're actually in there because of drugs. The charge is not necessarily the problem. I've never met anyone that just loves stealing. I have only met people that steal because they're addicted to drugs. I never met anybody that was caught drunk in the middle of the day pissing on some bush outside of a restaurant because of, oops, I had uh, three martinis instead of two. No, they're an alcoholic. They have a drug problem. And I've met a few guys, unfortunately, it's sad and it's not forgivable, but they hit somebody, maybe even their wife, because they were on meth. They'd been up for three weeks. They were psychotic. They were hallucinating and they hit somebody. They weren't thinking clearly and not just not thinking clearly. They couldn't think clearly. Have you ever been up for 24 hours? shit gets weird. <laughs> Have you ever been up for three weeks? Tell me you're making good choices when that happens. So to look at a piece of paper and say, no, no, they're lying when they say prison is full of uh, a bunch of drug addicts. That's not the case. Prison is full of a bunch of monsters. Well, addiction turns people into monsters, right? Addiction would not be a problem if we could just get high on heroin and stay the same wonderful son that we used to be, stay the same good friend that we used to be, stay the same loving boyfriend, husband that we used to be. But that's not what addiction is. Addiction takes everyone in your life and makes them miserable. It makes you miserable. It steals everything from you, not just material. You like to play guitar? You don't play guitar anymore. Do you like to work on computers? Sorry, that's not for you. Drug addiction is not as simple as, do you use the drug or not? It causes all sorts of insane behavior. And why does it do that? Because it's a mental illness. It's literally insanity. There are plenty of people trying to defend what prisons are doing, trying to say these people need to be locked up and they don't need help because they're just violent and they need to just be punished. And then the people get back out and they do it again. It's because we never look at the problem. We're putting a bandaid on something. The problem is drug addiction. So if you take away this technicality and you look at what really caused the people to catch the robbery charge, that they broke into the house, not because, gosh, dang, I just love breaking and entering and stealing jewelry, but because they were fiending, they were desperate, they were physically in need of something where they would be potentially lethally sick. And I'm not saying they should get the drug. I'm just saying that's why they did it. Uh, then 90% of people in prison are <laughs> drug addicts. There are plenty of people in prison that are monsters. There are some evil people in this world, and some of them are, are you know, in prison. Murderers, I'm not going to say the word, but, you know, it's bad in there. But most of them are in there because drugs made them do something that they would never do if they weren't a drug addict. I know that was my story, so... I think I'm going to make a video about that at some point, maybe soon. But I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, hearing about these 10 prison myths and that maybe it'll make you think about prison a little differently. Uh, it's not as bad in some ways as you might hear from Hollywood, and it's definitely not as good in some ways as you might hear from politicians. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, quick mention, I do have a Patreon account, patreon.com slash Max Haddad, my name, uh, if you want. 
is optional, of course. <laughs> I'm just glad that you watched the video to the end. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, yeah, take care of yourselves. I think I already said that in the video, but <laughs> have a good day. Bye.